And that's what I'd sound like if I tried to pronounce this. That's a, that's probably about what I'd sound, try to, you know, what I'd sound like if I tried to say this name. Anyway, what's up, YouTube? Alex here, 95 bringing you guys a video. Um, this is going to be a card review, but to compensate for a lot of the card reviews I haven't done, I'm going to do a double card review in one video. So I'm going to hop right into it and show you guys some really cool cards that I think are going to be really good in the future. Um, the first card um, that I'm going to be reviewing is Vanity's Fiend. This is one of my favorite cards in this format, regardless of if you're playing Frognarks or not, or a tribute base deck like that. I think this card is great. If you can run a great Frognarks build with this, maybe two of these and like a lad or something, it's amazing. Vanity's Fiend is basically... I think it's actually better than Christia in some aspects because it's a little bit more spe uh, splashable. You can run it in most decks. It's only one tribute. It's, it has a huge um, attack. Like, it really just has a huge fist. Um, literally has a little bushy fist right there. Thumbs up for the bushy fist. Whatever the fuck that is. I don't know. I think he's like a Sasquatch. Is it a guy or a girl? I don't know. You guys tell me below what he is. Um, but anyway, he's great. Um, his, his defense is actually, it's mediocre, 1,200. So really, people's only outs are like Book and then Run It Over or Dark Hole. Um, they can't exceed, they can't synchro, they can't reborn to get over this. So there's really very few outs. Um, one of my best tips that I want to have with this card is actually you guys want to play it, kind of like how you guys play Stardust Dragon, assuming you play it, right? Um, you don't always want to attack with it because people will have like random things. Um, you know, uh, D Prisons maybe, those have been floating around. Um, Mirror Forest, shit like that. Um, sometimes you even want to just keep him in defense. I won a game the other day just by keeping him in defense and attacking with other stuff. So my opponent couldn't special. It really kills a lot of decks. Every Pretty much every every top tier deck right now it kills. Um, and it really hurts them really badly. So that's one of my first cards that I'm going to review. Um, I'm going to try to be really concise on these. So I think it's really good. You can try to splash it, maybe side it in uh, card decks like Plants. Maybe side one to two of these. Um, I like two-sided personally. If you're running Frognarks, I would main this definitely. The next card I'm going to be reviewing is uh, for the future. All these cards are somewhat for the future, but they're really playable now. Is Kaiku uh, Blast from the Past. This guy's amazing. I think all you need is two. Two's a perfect number. Three's too much because um, you're going to be citing other cards. This is mainly for Dark Worlds when they come out. But he's a um, he's the reason why this card's so good, aside from um, preventing your opponent from moving your cards, if you're playing like a Plant Mirror Match or a Dark World Mirror Match, for instance, the reason he's great is besi aside from being dark and fueling things such as BLS, um, and having a high attack, he's also great because um, not only do you constantly remove stuff, but the fact is um, he basically acts as a card that can be used in multiple matchups. So he's not um, just against Dark World, he's not just against plants, he's not just for agents, you know, he's multitask. Um, you can use him against, in so many matchups, he's really crucial. Um, I think two's really good, and I think pretty much every deck can support him. You should at least be siding two of these. Um, against decks like Dark Worlds, I don't think they're amazing. They're they're a good deck, don't get me wrong, but they're just kind of a beat stick deck. You know, they're just recycled Grapha. It's basically the the same bullshit. They really people think they spam insanely. They really don't. Um, there's really bad builds, but then there's good builds like Drag Down to the Grave and stuff. Those decks are really annoying, but uh, he's great regardless. Um, you know, he really solves those problems. If you can get a Grapha or two in the grave and then just remove them or whatever. Um, it's amazing. Let's say you have like a, um, you know, protection down for um, against Grappa and whatnot, or like a Veiler in hand. You can just Veil, and then you can do other shenanigans. So it's a really good crate. And if for some reason you're running a level three tuner, I don't know. I've seen people run Gale. You can try Arcanite Magician, I guess, in your extra deck, but I doubt that's going to be happening often. If you guys also want to try other cards um, against decks like that, specifically Dark World, because I know a lot of people have been asking me. You can try a uh, Consecrated Light. You can also try. Uh, which I'm going to call it, uh, Shadow Imprisoning Mirror, obviously, and uh, cards along those lines. Next card I'm going to be reviewing is Boink, 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 Boink. Yep, Soul Exchange, really good card, amazing defense. You can synchro with it, it just sits there. It's like a threatening roar of this format. Um, I love this card, it's a quick play. That's the best part about it. It's, it's one of my old favorite cards all the way since GOAT Control Format. It's just it's just one of my favorite cards. It's one of those cards that it, it's multi it's multi versatile. Like You can use it in so many different scenarios. You can use it for defense, you can synchro with it. Um, it really, like, it's multi-purpose. It's, it can be both a proactive and a passive card, so, um, you can either use it to go off if you need certain things. Um, if you're trying to go off with it, don't play it on your turn and then try to synchro. You're gonna look stupid, um, a lot of the time. Uh, it's just, you can't special summon any other monsters this turn, so, you know, you, you gotta keep that in mind. You can't special summon any other mon- or you can't summon, period, I'm sorry. You can't summon, period, any other monsters this turn, so if you're trying to go off, like, planning next turn, like, plants or whatever- um, you want to do it during their end phase. You go um, scapegoat, and then you get your four tokens. And the next turn, you draw, and then you can special summon. So it's a really good multi versatile card. Um, I think you guys should try it out. Um, not every deck can support it, but most decks can support it in the main. If not, you can try siding it. The last card I saved. It's more of a fun card that I wanted to review for a while. Um, 
It's mainly against anti-meta bases decks. Um, I, I've sh I don't think I've ever showed it before. It's one of my personal favorite cards in this game. Um, we're, you know, at least in the top 100. Sasuke Samurai number 2. He's a little weenie monster. He comes in Dark Crisis and Dark Revelations 1. Um, he's 200 attack, 300 defense, um, 1 star wind. So uh, I guess you can use him, you know, for those little random 1 star synchros. You can use him with Mystic Piper, which I love. Um, you can use him with 1 for 1, which is one of the most crucial cards with him that I love. Um, basically, this guy... He's warrior, so you can rota him if you have to. If you're running plants, which I like siding him in plants, potentially trying to main one. Basically, he says once per turn during your main phase, so either your main phase one or two, you can pay 800 life points. If you do until the end phase, spell or trap cards cannot be activated, period. So he's basically a cold wave for that one turn. So it's ridiculous during your turn. You can go one for one, discard Dandelion, for instance, or some random bullshit card. Um, bring him out, and then if you have all your crazy plays, you can pay 100 life points, shut down all their spells and traps. So he basically acts as a cold wave, which I really like this card. Um, he's multi-versatile. He has low attack, low defense, but if you can protect him, you know, control the game. If you have control of the game, you have, like, a couple back rows, you know, like a, a beefy monster or two. You can just control the game, summon him, you know, do all your little shenanigans, get in there for, like, a weenie poke, um, which is what we call it, a little slice and dice. So he's pretty cool. I like the card. Tell me what you guys think of it. Um, those are the only cards I'm going to be reviewing for the day, so um, send in requests for card reviews. I'm going to be taking those. You can comment below, but I prefer if you PM me. Um, so I hope you guys uh, like this video. Please thumbs up, uh, comment, rate, subscribe. I'll be posting more videos in the near future. Um, I have another pro player coming up if you guys want to see that. Just in case you guys didn't hear, I did restart the pro player series. The last one was kind of fuzzy. I was kind of shaky on it, so you know, give me some slack on that. But he didn't check it out. If you didn't check it out, I'm sure you'll at least like it and get it for the most part. So click here. I'll have a link right here to pro player number 13. Um, it's a great tip video. I think you guys will like it, especially for newer players. So this has been a Yu-Gi-Oh card review. Alex here on 95 channel. Peace, you guys. And uh, comment, rate, subscribe. And oh, and uh, shout out to uh, anyone here because I'm going to forget names. And I think there's a couple people here that asked me for shout outs. I'm just blanking out. And you guys know I'm terrible with names. So uh, yeah, later.